Hello, I'm Yozas and in this tutorial I will show you how to use improved Perlin noise code from this page. The link is in the description. In order to do this tutorial you must have been done my first tutorial of noise series where we generate random noise animation. It is necessary because we will use the code from that tutorial to make Perlin noise animation such like this. Let's go to our code and let's create class called improved noise. Now we can go to Pelle noise page that I showed you earlier. Let's copy everything from public final class improved noise line and let's replace that copied code with everything what is inside improved noise class. Let's rename our class to Pelle noise 3D. Now I want you to take a good attention to this method. This is a noise method and uh, it is the main method of Perlin noise algorithm. We will use this method to generate Perlin noise images or Perlin noise animation. Let's go to our main class. Let's comment out everything that we have in the main method and let's call that method that I mentioned earlier. Now let's print out that method. Basically what we are doing here, we are calling uh, Perlin noise function in system out print line method and this method will print a number that was generated by Perlin noise method. Now let's use this method and try to generate 2D Perlin noise image. Let's remove this line and restore our old code. Let's go to random noise class and let's copy this part of code. Let's go to Perlin noise 3D class and let's paste it here. Uh, let's remove random variable also, let's remove this part of line. I know that we are getting an error here, but believe me, we will fix that very soon. We will use these two for loops to generate required number of Perlin noise values. And these values will be used to generate a Perlin noise image. Okay, now inside these two for loops we have to call our Perlin noise method. This method takes three arguments. So we will add here x, y and for the third dimension we will add constant value because at this moment we will do no changes in that dimension. Since Perlin noise returns values from minus 1 to 1, we have to change it. And we have to change it where the range is from 0 to 1. And this line of code do this. Okay, what is left to do is dealing with set RGB method where we getting an error. It takes three arguments. First and second are just the position coordinates of a pixel. So we will add X and Y values from our four loops. The last argument defines the color of the pixel and we have to put a hexadecimal integer into that place. 
first two numbers of that hexadecimal number represents red color, second two green color and the last two blue color. Let's firstly generate gray pearly noise image the four first two second two and last two values of hexadecimal number will be the same to do that i will create three integer variables for blue green and red colors let's deal with the blue variable first firstly we have to convert double value to the integer which range is from zero to ff in order to do that we have to multiply our noise value to hexadecimal number ff. Since blue value stands at the end of hexadecimal number, we have to do nothing more for this variable. Green variable stands in the middle of the hexadecimal number of the pixel. All we have to do is to multiply b value by hexadecimal 100 and we will get a green value. Red value are first two numbers in our hexadecimal number, therefore we have to multiply b value by hexadecimal number 10,000 and we will get red value. Then we have all values of red, green and blue colors, we have to make final hexadecimal number of our pixel. What we have to do is just add these color values together. Now we can add x and y values and our hexadecimal number into set RGB method. Now let's go to the main class and change random noise to pearly noise 3D in this line. This will call our pearly noise method instead of random noise method. Let's run our code. As you can see, we're getting gray image instead of noise image. I made this mistake purposely to show you what happens when you add integer values without fractional part into the pearly noise function. Now to fix this, we have to go to the line where we called pearly noise method. As you can see, first and the second arguments are x and y values that are integers. So we need to fix this. One of the fastest way is to divide these values by the image size. To do that we need to create two double variables and make a division. Now instead of x and y, we add these double values. Let's try to run our code again. As you can see, we are getting some smooth color changes in the image. However, the level of detail is very low. How can we increase the level of detail of this image? Well, for that we have to create additional variable called frequency. When we increase the frequency, we will get more details in the image. When we created our frequency variable, we have to multiply our double values in the pellet noise method by this frequency variable. As you can see, when we multiply double values by 6, we are getting image with much more details. We can increase frequency even more and of course we will get even more details in the image. Now we can add time as third argument in Pelle noise function. First, let's create a static double variable called time. As we know, our noise method is called every 30 milliseconds. See my first tutorial of noise series if you do not know why. And because noise method is called every 30 milliseconds, we can also increment our time value every 30 milliseconds. If we do that, and add time as our third argument into the Pelle noise method, we will see Pelle noise animation. Such like this. We can also add time to our x and y arguments in Pelle noise method. 
If we do that, we will get barely noise animation with additional movement into X and Y directions. The view looks similar as you watch waves of water while flying on the plane. If we use time variable instead of frequency variable, we can add zoom out effect. such like this. If we additionally add time to first and second arguments, we will get zoom out effect with additional movement into X and Y directions. Finally, we can change color of our Perlin noise animation by changing hexadecimal value that codes pixel color. For instance, if we remove G and B variables, we will get red Perlin noise animation. In this tutorial, we used Perlin noise function as a black box that takes inputs and gets you an output. I did not explain to you what each line of Perlin noise algorithm means. In the next tutorial, we will write 2D Perlin noise algorithm line by line and I will explain you everything. Good understanding of how Perlin noise works will let you to modify it as you like and create truly extraordinary things. See you next time.